Hey everybody and welcome to Technology and Toys and today's video is about eight great Mac utility slash productivity apps. Uh, these can be helpful for keeping files where you need them, cleaning out files from where you don't need them, or giving you quick access to apps and files that you need. So the first app on this list is actually two apps but they perform the exact same purpose. Um, they are Mac Paws Clean My Mac 3 and Clean My Drive 2. As you can see I have Clean My Mac 3 running up here in my menu bar and it gives me an overview of my internal drives. I have 68.31 gigs available on my internal SSD. It shows me the overall storage, the health, my memory usage my battery, my trash bin, and then if I launch it, it gives me this screen and if I click scan, it'll start scanning my Mac for old junk apps. As you can see, it's already found 2.1 gigs. Uh, this will clean out old junk files, duplicate files, uh, language files that you know you're never going to use. Like I'm, I know I'm never going to use my MacBook in German, so I got rid of everything except English a long time ago. It clears out app caches that can get quite large, as you can see here. And once it's finished its scan, you have this screen here and you can come over to this menu bar and you can review the files and cache and folders that it wishes to clean. You can deselect certain ones if you want to keep them. And then all you have to do is click clean and it'll immediately start deleting the unnecessary files. And there you go, deleted 2.13 gigabytes from my boot disk. And as you can see, I now have more space on my drive. I can also click free up on the memory and it'll get rid of older programs running in the background that I have closed down here. And now I have half of my memory free. It also gives you a little time until full on your battery and when I unplug it, it'll give me time remaining. Now the second app of this first spot is Clean My Drive 2. It does the exact same thing just with external drives like USB drives or hard drives or remote servers that you may have. Uh, it does the exact same thing when you plug it in, it'll scan it and you can clean it of the cache for old files that are still there. It might take a bit longer than uh, Clean My Mac does because it has to access the external drive, but big picture, it does the exact same thing. The second app on this list is Moom, M-O-O-M, -O -O -M, Moom. And what this does, so say you have a couple different apps open, like I have here, I have TweetDeck, and I'll open up Safari. And what Moom does is when it's activated, you just hover your mouse over the green button at the top of your application and it gives you these little options and what you can do is you can set it to full screen, you can set it to half the screen, be it left or right, and then you can set it to top or bottom. And it also gives you the little option to revert it back to normal and this is good for using apps in split screen without having to drag them up and use them in a completely different space. So you can just throw them on your desktop and use them like this. And when you're done, all you gotta do is just click that button and it'll revert it to the way it was originally. The third app on the list is an app that I use a lot more than I realize. And whenever I restart my Mac to install updates and it doesn't launch automatically, I kind of have a panic attack and then I realize I have to relaunch it. But I'm going to launch it for you guys right now and it's called Ring Menu. It resides up here in the menu bar and you click on it and it gives you all these settings. You can change the gestures that will invoke this menu. You can change where it pops up. Uh, the zoom on the items in the menu, color icons, and what this menu is, is if I rest three fingers on my trackpad, it'll pull up a menu with some stock apps, as you can see, Mail, iTunes, App Store, Safari, Launchpad, Finder, as well as any apps that I have running, such as ScreenFlow to record this, Pages, and then it gives me the option to make little um, collections and in these collections are more apps they're basically like folders now as I said I use this a lot more than I realize and it's just because say I want to check the app store 
and then I want to go look something up on Google and I open Safari and then I want to go to my launch pad and open up another app, say calculator. And then when you download it straight from the app store, you don't get this feature, but if you go to the website and download the toolkit, you can right click on the app and you have the option to quit the application. And as you can see, calculator just disappeared. I quit Safari and Safari goes away. I'll quit App Store and that goes away. So this is really good if you are someone that doesn't really like the dock and you just want to open an app wherever your mouse happens to be resting without having to use Spotlight Search for it. As I said twice now, I use this a lot because I use Parallels for these, these apps and it's a lot easier to click on Dreamweaver and have it open immediately. It'll immediately start Parallels, it'll immediately start Windows 10 and then Dreamweaver instead of having to go search for Parallels, search for Windows, then open Dreamweaver. The next app on the list is one that I can't really capture effectively, but it is one of my favorite apps because it's so useful. And up here, it's Duet Display. Now, what this does is it allows you to take your iPhone, your iPad, your iPod Touch, and your lightning cable or 30 pin connector and plug it into your MacBook. And you can use that device as a separate display. So I use it with my iPad a lot. Um, I'll hook my iPad up to the side of my MacBook. I'll plug it in, I'll launch Duet on my iPad, connect it on the MacBook, and I'll have my email or a finder window open on the iPad. And I'll be editing videos over here. The fifth app on the list is called Drop Zone 3, and it's right up here in the menu bar. And what this is, is it's a drop bar, as you can see here. It also gives you shortcuts to folders and files and applications, as well as sharing and other utilities that you can download through extensions and plugins. I have a couple here. Uh, and just to show you what it does as an example, you drag this file up to the little Drop Zone thing and it will save it in the drop bar and you can bring this file wherever you want to so I can grab things on my desktop, throw them up in a drop zone and then put them in a finder folder somewhere else. I can open folders directly from it so I'll open up my technology and toys folder and as you can see there's everything in it. And another cool thing is I can set my desktop picture just by dragging an image onto the desktop picture command and as you can see it just changed my desktop for me. The sixth app is called Reflector 2 Two, and I'll open it for you right now. And essentially what this app does is it turns your Mac into an Apple TV. So I'll come over to my phone real quick. I'll tap on screen mirroring and it shows up as my MacBook Pro. It gives me an AirPlay code. Let me enter the code, click OK. And as you can see, it's now mirroring my iPhone to the MacBook. It is rather responsive. It just seems choppy because I just launched it. I can also use it to stream games to the MacBook to record them. As you can see, it has a little record button. And if I'm not mistaken, I think you can stream directly to YouTube and a couple other platforms using this app. Uh, I haven't tried it yet because I don't stream mobile games that much. For people that have a MacBook or an iMac but not an Apple TV and you want to share the content of your phone or iPad screen, with the people around you, this is a great solution for that. The seventh app on this list is called PopClip, and I'm gonna open it for you guys right now. Now this app also resides in the menu bar, and what it is is a better selection tool, if you will. Uh, you can change it, and you can add all kinds of actions to it, and what it does is if I select meaningless, it'll come up with the PopClip bar, and I can bold the word. I can unbold it, italicize it, underline it. I can highlight it if I want to. I also get the option to capitalize the word, and if I make any changes to the word, I can revert those changes, although it kind of messes up here and there. I can search for that word on the internet. I can cut, copy, paste. I can delete that word entirely. I can search for it on Google. I can make it all lowercase. I can send messages, make a new note, title case it, make the entire word uppercase or my selected content. I can put it in parentheses, brackets. I can paste without formatting. So if I copy something in a different font, I can paste it like this and it will apply whatever font I have in this document. 
I can throw quotations around it. I can have the MacBook say it to me. I can select all. There's a whole lot that you can do with this and I'll leave the link to their website with all the extensions in the description as well as the links to download all the apps that I'm mentioning today as well as prices to go with them because they're not free they're except for clean my drive 2 that's free that's on the app store but everything else on this list does cost money uh, most of them are worth it but that's a decision for you guys to make and let's move on to the eighth and final app if you've been paying attention to this video, you'll notice that almost all of the apps that I've mentioned previous to this are in the menu bar. And it's not just the apps that I've mentioned today, there's a bunch of other apps. Um, the Creative Cloud Suite is one of them. As you can see, BetterNet up here. Uh, ScreenFlow is one of them. And then you have your system indicators, such as location settings, your time, your battery. And that can all get very, very cluttered very quickly. And the last app, on this list can fix that very, very easily. It's called Bartender, and it's this little icon up here that if I click on it, it'll extend the menu bar to showcase everything that I have in the menu bar. So it tidies up the menu bar, makes it look a lot nicer, and if I right click on it and go to Preferences, it shows me everything that's active in my menu bar right now, and it gives me the option to always show in menu bar, and Bartender gives you the option of showing it in the menu bar, or in the Bartender menu, or just hiding it all together. As you can see, the Wi-Fi indicator just completely disappeared. I can make it show up in the menu bar itself, or I can show it in the Bartender bar, so when I click on it, there it is. I click on it again and it disappears. And you can do this for anything that runs in the menu bar. So you can see Clean My Mac is here, Drop Zone is here, Pop Clip, Ring Menu. You can change the appearance of it. It gives you a couple presets and then I made mine my logo and it will show up in the menu bar. You can also change the hotkeys for it. So if you don't want to come up here and click every time you want to access something, you can set your function keys to do it or something of that sort. And overall, Bartender just makes your desktop look a bit nicer, look a bit cleaner because everything's not super cluttered up here. If I extend it, it comes out with all of these other things that I really don't use too much, but they are there for me to use. So I just leave the things that I know I'm going to use the most up here, and then everything else is inside of Bartender. So there you guys have it. That is my list of eight great Mac apps for utility or productivity or just quality of life improvement. As I mentioned before, I'll have the links to all of these applications and where to download them, as well as pricing for all of them, because as I said before, they're not free, with the exception of Clean My Drive. Personally, I feel that most of these are worth it. As I said before, there are some that I definitely use more than others, those being Clean My Mac, Ring Menu, Duet Display, but everybody has their own use for different individual apps and I figured I'd showcase a couple of them here for you guys today. If you guys enjoy this type of video be sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel as well as turning on notifications so that way you get notified whenever I upload another video. And until the next video guys, goodbye.